Welcome to Let's Talk Algorithms. My name is Venkatesh and today we'll be solving the problem of fruit into baskets. So this is a lead code medium and it's been asked in one of the big companies, Google, over 200 times over the last six months. It's kind of a big deal. So let's try to solve this problem. Start with the problem description. In a row of trees, the ith tree product fruit with type tree of i. You start at any tree of your choice, then repeatedly perform the following steps. Add one piece of fruit from this tree to your baskets. So this is more than one basket. You cannot stop. If you cannot, stop. If you cannot add any more, you have to stop. Move to the next tree to the right, basically the next one of the current tree. If there is no tree to the right, stop. Okay, note that you do not have any choice after the initial choice of starting tree. You must perform step one, then step two. Back to step one, step two. Okay, you have two baskets and each basket can carry carry any quantity of fruit, but you want to, each basket to only carry one type of fruit each. So when I initially read this uh, problem description i got really confused i didn't knew what they were asking for i had to reread uh, multiple times and look at the examples to understand see this is the key part to the question you only have you have two baskets each, each basket can carry any quantity so if you look at the input basket is basically uh, a basket of fruit uh, this is a fruit type so you can say one is of a fruit type, two is of a fruit type, and one is of a fruit type. When I say fruit type, basically it's a fruit basket. So one is a fruit basket, two is a fruit basket. And then um, since you have two baskets, you can put two ones into one ba in the in the one fruit basket, and you can put one two into another fruit basket. So total you can collect three fruits. So the problem uh, at the end of the day comes up to find a subarray which has uh, the most number of uh, elements, distinct elements, uh, basically two elements. So you have to find a subarray like here, one, two, two, um, which has only two fruit baskets or two numbers. Um, so it's one, two, two is three. That's where the output is three. If you go here, it's one, two, three, two, two. So if you start at one, then you can collect fruit basket one and then fruit basket two. Um, you have to go again. Uh, this is a new basket. You can't collect this. So if you start at zero, the value is like you can only collect two fruits. So that's what the explanation said. If we if we started at the first three, we would only collect one and two. But rather, if you start at the index one, you collect two, you collect three, and you have already a fruit basket two. So you would just add them here. So in total, you can collect four. So let's see what we can do. Uh, let's make a small workbook. So the problem, let's write the, down the problem. Find subarray with only two elements repeated a lot of times, repeated maximum number of times. So when, when you see problems like this, uh, I mean, the intuition is if you've solved enough questions, you would think of this name, sliding window. So what happens is in a sliding window, <clears throat> so let's take the example one, two, three, two, two. So in this problem, when it's a sliding window, you start at index one. And when you start at index one, so you put the bag, uh, you put, you collect the fruits. There's one, there's two, and then three is a new fruit basket. You only have two, remember? So once you start, you can't do anything. So you can only collect two here, but rather if you start at uh, index one here, so you can collect two, you can collect three. You have already the fruit basket two, so Let's say fruit basket two, fruit basket three. So you add one here, you add one here, and then the if you see another fruit basket two, make it two, the count, fruit basket two, make make it three. 
so it's it's basically you check sliding window is basically you check until you exit you find exit condition like you started a certain index you continue uh, checking for what you want until you find exit condition then exit and then start at the next index and then do the same thing so it's basically um, your first window is one comma two your second window is two comma three comma two comma two so which is the longest and you will reach the end of the array so that's when you exit um, so these are the windows if you use if, if we do something like this uh, we could solve the problem um, I mean the amortized complexity is still around O of n square um, but usually like depending on the kind of input um, most of the times you you would do better than n square you would do better than um, you, you would do around like O of n so let's solve this problem as I said we'll have to find a subarray using a sliding window approach and count the number of um, fruits of two types so let's start what happens if the tree contains tree is basically this array is the tree so what happens if the tree contains less than two elements right if it contains less than two elements you just return the length of the tree actually it's less than or is equal to two because even if you have two elements then uh, it's either two different basket or it's the same uh, I mean it's just one basket repeated two times either way you could just return the length of the tree so that takes care of the some of the edge cases let's call result just initialize a variable result zero and then start um, traversing the tree for i equal to zero length of tree i plus plus so what you'll do here is um, so one thing is like let's say you have a result um, greater than the length of tree minus i then you break uh, what this condition is basically imagine um, you have a really big array which only contains uh, two types of fruit baskets like let's say 10,000 um, items in the 10,000 trees of only two types so uh, when you started this at the you know the initial window that would cover the whole array anyway uh, so you don't have to continue checking again from starting from the next element because even um, even if you start the next element that number of fruits is go still going to going to be less than what you already got initially so this exit condition helps us um, not check basically some values let's have a temporary variable j which starts at i plus one and let's have a tree map basically to um, uniquely identify two different trees because that's what the question asks so once you have a tree map let's put the initial tree as an tree of i true right now let's do a count it's basically it's a window count um, result is the overall result this is each window count then you have tree map because you put one element already now um, so you have to start example you started one uh, you go until the your exit condition so the exit can you have to f form an exit condition here the first thing is your you can't go beyond the three bounds so that's one thing and so you have tree map of j or length of tree map less than two 
so let's look at why we wrote this condition this is to just make sure that we don't go array out with the bounds um, the second condition is you you will count the values if the fruit uh, type belongs to something which we already have if we have the kind of basket to store that fruit we are okay we should continue or if we only have like see you got we initially put only the tree of i here uh, we didn't put the tree of j though we have j value so if the tree has only one uh, basket i mean if, if the map has like only one basket then we allow to um, you know check for the second basket so once we have in that is um, we put tree of j is equal to true you increase the count because all positive condition and then j has to go forward so j plus plus you check if basically result is less than count here if the window count is more than the result um, assign the value to the result and finally return a result so one thing you can do probably like no this is fine so as i said this is your window uh, traversal logic and this is your exit condition so you only look until you find the result which is greater than the leftover elements basically if you if the if your result is six and if your leftover elements are only three you don't have to calculate the rest of the things right because you can exit because your result is already greater than the rest of the stuff so let's try to run see if it works right uh, the initial one to one seems to be working fine let's use another input okay so if you put 0122 you get output 2 instead the expected value is 3 let's see what we are missing so all right oh you know what this is tree of j instead of j let's make sure we you come in you check the exit condition you send j send send shade map put in the first value have the count the sliding window uh, reassign the count to the max or result and exit let's try all right so let's check a bigger one all right 515 perfect let's submit hopefully it works boom it took 200 milliseconds uh, let's see how we compare against other people when the 90 test cases looks like the code passes all of them but apparently uh, this is a new question so they don't have the graph to show uh, i mean where the current where, where does the current code we wrote um, you know compare against other people so hopefully when it comes back i'll edit the video or something all right thanks for watching if you have any questions um, please leave a question or send an email to let's talk algorithms thank you